Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded, and we're back to do yet another movie review. We're taking another break from the Cristiano movies because my body can only take so much, which is saying a lot based on the things that have been inside of me. Uh, we're doing one that's been much requested, Christian Mingle. Now, oh. if that oh. name sounds familiar, it's because it is based on a website, ChristianMingle.com. It's like a dating website yeah. for Christians only. By the way. And it's an American-based website because, you know, in America, it's so hard to find other Christians, so you gotta do it on the website. And their motto is something like, sometimes you're waiting for God to make the next move when he's telling you, you need to do something or whatever, and you get it. Anyway, they made a movie. So, here's a movie based on a website for Christians to date each other. It's worse than it sounds. The movie begins with a narration which is pretty typical for these religious films because they don't know how to write dialogue without it being expository but oddly enough this one is so ready to assault your senses it doesn't even wait for the studio logos to be over before your bland mary sue protagonist starts expositing and i like how right away this movie will establish itself as one that will openly and unsarcastically use the word kooky we all have stories to tell our own paths to faith in christ some are kookier than others like finding jesus in a piece of driftwood Buckle in, kids. This shit is about to get wacky as fuck. The voice of the woman that will most certainly be our main character explains that she was searching for a guy to put a ring on her finger, but something kooky happened on the way. She found him. No, not a dude to fuck her without having to feel the guilt of the sin of fornication, but... I found him. That's him with a capital H. Followed by the maximum of time we can legally share with you this killer guitar riff. Like all true classics of cinema, the opening titles are accompanied by a shitty Christian pop song of the week. I've always said that the Ten Commandments and Ben-Hur would have been vastly improved by a Newsboys cameo. So after we get a two-minute Christian song slash credit roll, we open on a date between our relatively attractive main character and what looks like Nosferatu's younger brother, Ryan Ferratu. As she explains her experiences in France, we get our first poop joke only two minutes and 34 seconds into the film. I love stinky cheese. It clogs the pipes, but still. (laughs) Man, is this kooky! The woman is seemingly confused why Ryan Ferratu would be more interested in the woman across the bar. Meanwhile, the audience is also more interested in the extras they decided to hire because this is the type of shit that comes out of her fucking face. You know, they say the uh, best cheese comes from between French farmers' toes. I don't know why he's going to go and try and hit on that other woman. He needs to learn that a bird in the hand is worth two in her bush. I worked real hard on that joke, guys. You're welcome. That's terrible. (laughs) After the date, she goes to dinner with her girlfriends, and they talk about how she wants to meet a guy. A guy couldn't keep eye contact with me for ten seconds. Is it me? No, sweetie, they're just dumb, stupid guys. A good friend would tell you that absolutely, yes, it is you. Without a doubt, it's your personality. Yes. Also, your name is Gwyneth, which makes me think of Paltrow, which then makes me think that you steam your vagina and would someday name our children after fruit. So yeah, you're not doing it for me. As she laments about her romantic failings, we are reminded that the only goal for a woman should be to get married, and that this is definitely a competition. If you're not careful, you're going to be the last one standing. No, 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 no. Anne-Marie will be the last one standing, guaranteed. Okay, you're telling me this Butterface found a husband, but this solid seven can't get laid? (laughs) I can take a lot in a movie, but I can only suspend my disbelief so far before I snap. That night, she goes home and starts flipping through the channels. Stop it! Stop being poor! Jesus Christ, it's not even August, and I'm already sick of the Trump campaign ads. Guys, I'm not shitting you. When she goes home and turns that TV on, she sees a Christian Mingle commercial. This is like product placement inception. It's an ad inside an ad, inside a testimonial about the effectiveness of television marketing, inside a shitty Christian movie that I'm forced to watch because I made questionable life choices and started a business with Hugo. So here we go, six minutes into the film and you can already see the problem. The entire movie only exists as an hour and a half advertisement for a Christian dating site. Who greenlit this? And if anyone finds the guy, can you pass along to him my screenplay for a Schindler's List sequel about Oscar Schindler starting a J-Date account? 
The next week, she's riding her bike to work and monologuing about how she just wants a nice, decent guy. She should try Twitter. That seems to work for people. At ChristianGirl69 says she wants a decent guy. I'm a decent guy. I just don't understand why they say they want nice guys, but I'm standing here for them every time they slip and fall with my MLP Blu-rays, my waifu body pillow, and my exotic sword collection. And just in case you thought there was too little kook in this film, we meet the boss that's wacky because he's obsessed with nautical themes and attire. Some of you may recognize him as Bob from Heroes. How kooky is that? Yeah, so here comes the B-plot for the movie. Gwen works for an ad agency, and her firm is being courted to run a campaign for a cure for baldness. Of course, Gwen doesn't believe it's real, but her bald boss is completely taken in by the idea. Like Jake said, the boss wears a sailor hat and likes to be called Admiral, because the screenwriter thinks weird personality quirks are a stand-in for jokes if you're not funny. So the guy that invented this cure for baldness is named Donnie DeBona, but really, it's just John O'Hurley dressed up like Guy Fieri. He's giving it his best effort, people. That guy played Mr. Peterman on Seinfeld, by the way, in case you wanted to be super depressed about that guy's career trajectory. Wait a minute, guys. It's been six minutes. The movie is contractually obligated to have an ad placement right now. Find God's match for you at ChristianMingle.com, the leading site for Christian dating. It's the largest community, both nationally and where you live. So the moment she actually decides to join Christian Mingle is signaled by more Christian rock. I don't know what's worse at this point, the music or the fact that I chose to watch a 90 minute ad for a product I'll never use. Am I losing it? Am I taking crazy pills here? WHERE'S THE BLEACH?! So yeah, this is where Gwen finally decides to take a long shot and sign up for Christian Mingle as a last ditch effort to find a man. She is also apparently unaware of other non-Christian dating sites. But uh, I guess FarmersOnly.com the movie doesn't look as good on a poster. Now we get a montage of Gwen lying on her profile and making herself look really Christian by saying she goes to church every week and even makes up a fake church she goes to. Now, let me make this clear up front. As we find later, Gwen is, by all definitions, already a Christian. She believes in God and Jesus, she's been baptized, all that stuff. She just doesn't actually go to church that often. So the stakes of this movie are a Christian becoming even Christianer. All of this was unnecessary, by the way, since even the movie admits the site lets you say you don't go to church very often. And to demonstrate that she's not a real Christian, she goes to the library. Bitch, have you tried any other service here? There's so many. You can go to Tinder, OkCupid, Zeusk, Grinder, Daddy Hunt, Scruff, Hornet, Jack, Growler, or my favorite, Guys, with a Z. Anyway, the point is, you don't have to convert to Christianity to get someone to share your foot fetish with. That's what FeetFetishDating.com is for, idiot. So Gwen apparently has the fastest online dating turnaround in human history as she makes a date off screen and is meeting a guy at a coffee shop in the very next scene. This is weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's a weird way to meet somebody. I mean, what a strange new world. Online dating has been around since 1995, you weird gay-for-pay-looking motherfucker. So apparently we're getting our extra dose of kook from the fact that Gwyneth, quote, isn't a real Christian, but the dude she's on a date with has brought up Christianity twice in the first 60 seconds they've known each other, which can only mean one of two things. One, she's going to be slowly converted by him and they will live happily ever after, after they have their inevitable fight over the fact that she lied to him, but she'll, probably in the rain, pray to God or something, only to come out of the experience all the better for it. We will then fast forward to Christmas where they will kiss under the mistletoe and bonus points if she's pregnant or they have a baby. Or two, he kidnaps her and keeps her in the basement so she can follow him into the afterlife and be his virginal spirit wife for all of eternity. By the way, I genuinely wrote this before I saw the end. Dear uh, Lord, yes. we, uh, we just want to thank you for the coffee and the cookie. I have never prayed over coffee before. <laughs> I mean, you can't pray enough in this click, meet, merry world. Credit to the movie for the one joke that I actually laughed at. Update on the date. We now have met the 92nd mark, and they discussed marriage twice. This is going good. Breaking date update. This just in, Hugo. The man has complimented Gwyneth by telling her, You got spunk. 
Man, this date has more kook than the kooky monster. Am I right? The kooky monster? Yeah, I get it. It's just not funny. Yeah. The next day at her office, she tells her friend all about the plan, and her friend is adamant that Gwen isn't a Christian. Listen, movie. Yes, she is. She expressly (laughs) says she believes in God, the Christian one, and Jesus, and all that junk. Just because she doesn't go to church doesn't make her not a Christian. Even on the website, there was an option for not going to church almost at all. You can't just create conflict in your movie by changing the definitions of words to fit the pitch meeting. If this was the angle you wanted, why didn't you just make her an atheist? Or are you afraid if you put a non-asshole atheist in the movie, your demographic would be hoping she'd get Kevin Sorboed by the end? The B-plot comes in to break up the scene, but I refuse to acknowledge it because I don't believe in B-plots. So after a hard day's work, Gwyneth gets on a party line with her friends! Is it 1970 again? Now I have to relive the Beatles breaking up in Apollo 13! Great. Just great. Okay, second date time. They go out for sushi, which the guy thinks is gross, but he wanted to try it because it's, quote, the in thing now. Between thinking sushi is trendy and his amazement at online dating, I'm convinced this guy has been in stasis since the Clinton presidency. The penis one, not the not the upcoming pants suit one. Here's hoping that this isn't the only raw fish he consumes tonight. We will update you as the date progresses. It's a vagina joke, people. Fish. Think a little. Nailed it. Stay with me. I'm so proud of Anyways. you. I'm proud to be in business with you. <laughs> update! The uncivilized swine has stabbed a piece of raw fish with a chopstick and then chewed it for about a minute. If only the samurai were still around to rid us of this barbarian. Third date, they go to a Bible study with Paul's friends. His name is Paul, by the way, for the one person out there who cares. You can probably guess the humor here. She tries to be Christian, overshoots it, people think she's weird, repeat until it's not funny. Which is, is now. It it wasn't funny. It was funny once. You got me in the coffee joke, and that was in the trailer. So let's just, let's just move on, guys. It actually reminds me of one of my favorites. Yeah, I think the passage is from, um, Galatians. Because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman should have her own husband. It's interesting that a Bible study group would be confused about this verse. Why is it socially awkward for these people to hear a verse about sexual immorality? They don't study the Bible? Maybe they should have stuck to our Bible study instead. They'd get desensitized to that shit immediately. You guys remember when we talked about fucking that kid's corpse? Yeah. Yeah. That'll wear you down. So this date is basically just one long, awkward conversation about an old relationship and a bad Flavortown joke. It's like the producers wanted Guy Fieri here but couldn't afford him. Why would you want Guy Fieri? I'd like to take a moment to put you guys through just two seconds of what we went through for over 90 minutes. I like it around here. It's it's funky. Funky, funky. This is actual dialogue adults spoke in a full-length feature film that's just an ad for a shitty dating website. Thanks, America! Later on in the date, we find out the sentient jar of Mayo's family is all crazy religious, and the one story he decides to tell her about his father is that once he picked up driftwood and then carved Jesus into it, that's like going on a date and mentioning that my dad made golf clubs as a hobby growing up. Do you feel that? That's violent amounts of disinterest creeping over you like Bill Cosby after a recent roofying. Date update! They have an incredibly awkward and polite kiss. I'm sure this will turn into sex soon, right? Seriously, I will literally take any action at this point. Over the pants, even. I don't care, as long as someone comes. Gwen goes with Paul and his family to church and she overshoots it and dresses overly modestly. Then they go out to eat at, I'm not kidding, steak and cake. And she leads them in prayer, but she overshoots it and doesn't pray correctly. Are we detecting a pattern yet? But yeah, Hugo, Hugo's not kidding. It takes place at a place called Steak and Cake. I bet Steak and Shake was super pissed off. They should start a competing date site to get this feud really going. Call it Chili Cheese Fries and Strawberry Banana Milkshake Mingle. We'll, we'll workshop the title. Apparently, Loverboy is going to Mexico on a mission trip and forgot to tell our leading lady here. That's a dick move, bro. Sadly, this news came long after President Trump successfully built the wall to keep those dirty, dirty Mexicans out. 
Gwen is pissed off that he didn't tell her, and he feels bad, but they both act like he's leaving for a year. It's a month. It's actually kind of weird how big a deal they make this. Like, a month is not that long of a period of time. I think your relationship can survive one Netflix billing cycle. Oh look, there goes the B-plot, everyone! Everyone wave as we pass it by! Bye! The next day, Paul does the reasonable thing and apologizes for not telling her about Mexico. Then, of course, he invites her along. This is shaping up to be a healthy relationship with solid boundaries. So yeah, she's invited to Mexico by Paul to join them on their mission, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as she gets out of the truck, a Mexican boy steals her shit! We should have listened to you, Donald. I'm so sorry we doubted you. As Paul's dad sits around the fire and sings Jesus-inspired tunes, Gwyneth is surprised that in spite of the devastation, the Mexicans are still happy as shit. It's like, like super happy. Paul replies, When your peace comes from God, no storm can take it. Okay, Polly, Tell that to Haiti. The next day, Gwyneth will wake up late and in the frenzy of trying to catch up, drops her Christianity for Dummy's book on her bed and into the open for all to see. Yes, she traveled to Mexico for a fucking mission trip so she could impress the family of some dude she wants to lock down while toting around her Christianity for Dummy's book. Man, the writers make this feel so natural I can barely tell I'm watching a 90 minute product placement. It's worth noting here that there's this really cool scene where the rich white people indoctrinate the poor Mexican children into their particular sect of Christianity. Meanwhile, the mother tests Gwyneth's apologetics on the fly with a biblical problem of evil pop quiz. Yep. Couldn't make this shit up. Consider me officially on Suicide Watch. So after they meander around Mexico for like 15 minutes and she makes tons of faux pas until finally Paul finds her Christianity for Dummies book and we get the liar revealed story. Again, she explains she is Christian, she believes in God and Jesus, and she was even baptized, so she is by definition Christian. Anyway, she explains why she used Christian Mingle. She saw all the happy, smiling people and wanted that. So this woman is in charge of advertising, but doesn't understand how advertising works. <laughs> anyway, they break up. But Hugo, how will he be able to maintain an erection during sex if every time he looks down into her eyes, he's reminded that she doesn't attend church regularly? The answer is actually to turn her around and, and hit it from behind, but you, you get my point. And when they break up, she her argument is like, Hey, I'm totally willing to learn and grow spiritually and religiously with you, and I would love for you to be there to help me with this. And then he says... I don't think it works like that. Not for me, anyway. <laughs> what? This dude shut her down because she's not as Christian, even though she was entirely open to be, like, just as Christian! He's like, nah, I'm not plunging into that puss unless Jesus has purified it. Amazing. Gwyneth gets mad and throws her Jesus-related books into the same garbage can that Oscar the Grouch lives in. Seriously. Look how out of place this fucking thing is. This problem could have been solved with a single trip to Target and about 15 bucks. Come on, people! This is fucking Hollywood here! You know what bugged me the most about that trash can? What? No garbage bag. How the fuck does she empty that? Does she take it outside and dump it into a <laughs> dumpster? Just, I don't know. She's like, just winging it, you know? She's it, just grabbing life by the horns and riding that bull. Was it? Is that just her book <laughs> trash can? What does she do if she has leftover food? Does she have a garbage disposal? Not everything can go in there. The logistics of this garbage can confuse me greatly. No, all of her food goes into the toilet. That's a bulimia joke. And in case you forgot what the purpose of this movie was, don't worry, they will remind you with like the third or fourth Christian Mingle commercial. I haven't seen this much forced cramming since I accidentally accessed deep web porn. Okay, the B-plot, I'm gonna mention one thing about it. It ends on a very confusing note when Gwen tells her boss she won't do the fake baldness cure ads because she won't and can't have faith in it. But at the very end of her speech about not having faith, she just says she needs to believe in, in regard to Jesus. So how does that follow from what you just said two sentences ago about not having faith? And how does that follow from her saying earlier she always believed in God? I don't know, but the movie only has 20 minutes left, so I don't give a fuck. Gwen finally decides to fix her problems the same way all problems are fixed in modern Christ exploitation films. A Bible study montage. So yeah, she's even more Christian now or something, I guess. I don't know. It's just... Uh, this movie... I don't... I, 
Uh, 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 next joke. So Gwen seeks out therapy with her black friend, whose name I forget. I don't know what her name is. She called Anyways, her Oprah as a joke, which I thought you shouldn't call your black friends Oprah. Racist. You shouldn't do that. That was kind of racist. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I know that this is supposed to be a touching moment, but I mean, j- just watch this. What'd you say? Okay, I want Jesus in my life. There we go. I said it. Can you say it louder? I want Jesus in my life. There you go. <laughs> okay, say those words with literally any other proper noun in them, and it sounds creepy as fuck. Go ahead. Say, I want honey boo boo in my life. Now it just sounds like you want to touch Honey Boo Boo, which is both pedophilic and unsanitary. Gwen is now all full of Jesus' love juice and goes to find Paul at the church and apologizes to him, and presumably to get some of that sweet Christian strange. But oh snap, Paul is now dating that woman from the Bible study. This is presumably because they knew they needed like 15 extra minutes of drama at the end of the movie to meet the minimum for theatrical releases. Sometime after that, we get about a five-minute scene where Gwyneth nags Paul the entire time. Also, can we talk for a minute about the clothes she wears? It's like she saw a new girl once and decided to mold her entire style around whatever Zoe Deschanel would sell at a garage sale. So Gwen, yeah, takes Paul out for coffee and tries to talk him out of his relationship with Kelly because, yeah, that's the Christian thing to do. Now all she needs is to flip over Kelly's stuff and start swinging a whip at her and she'll be downright Christ-like. At 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 46 seconds, it begins to rain. All my predictions are coming true. I've seen so many fucking Christian films that I'm a goddamn prophet of them. Move over, Jesus. There's a new sheriff in town, and his name is me. I like that she spends the whole night crying with a storm raging outside because even though God doesn't care about AIDS babies in Africa, he has time to make sure your dramatic moments have proper backgrounds. She got those boots from Zoe's garage sale out of the free bin. She has a little narration that says after that, her and God had sort of a, quote, conversation. The movie proceeds to show her going about her day seeing signs like a couple or the sun shining in her face. I don't think this movie realizes what a vapid, self-obsessed douchebag this makes her look like. I hate people who interpret the most banal things as signs from God or the universe sent especially for them because they're the universe's special little snowflake. It's like Christian solipsism. So Gwyneth gets some mail and she reads it, discovering that she has received a letter from one of the girls in the Mexican school she helped indoctrinate. I mean, teach, and then, you know how when you read stuff, it's kind of like in this voice in your head? I'm not fucking with you. She reads it in her head as the most stereotypically, unbelievable, bad Mexican accent ever. Listen to this. I make a photograph of it for you. It look beautiful. It is beautiful. Sorry again for my English. I hope you like the photograph. Fucking incredible. So after she reads the letter, she responds like any rational adult would by moving to Mexico to teach English to children. Wasn't this about a dating website? So a kid runs into her class and says she needs to get to the church right now, but she demands he speak in English because she is a Trump supporter. I think that's four Trump jokes now, so we've officially beat that horse to death. She goes and, of course, Paul is there. He apologizes and says he wants to get back together. They kiss as a lone Mexican watches in the distance, and they all lived happily ever after. He's he's obviously the one working, though, yeah. which is his place. Yeah. And, I, and I fucking called it, right? Yeah. I fucking called it. Now, maybe I didn't call the whole being in Mexico part, but you've got to hand to me. I fucking called this shit. And what's my reward? Wasting one hour, 34 minutes, and 24 seconds of my life watching a garbage film and sharing it with you guys. We deserve groupies, man. Like, slutty, re- like, all they want is anal groupies. You have to talk them out of anal. I don't want anal from groupies. Group- I don't want it either. I'm just saying, that's how slutty they are. That's what we deserve. And then, like, for some reason, the last <laughs> shot of the movie is the school sign. Not, not, not kidding. It's because the one time you mentioned Driftwood. Oh. Dead. Well, that's, that's a Driftwood sign, sir. That's a weird beat to end the movie on, even now that I understand yeah, every, it. Yeah, every, every miracle... Or every 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 pie that God has his proverbial finger in is uh, punctuated by driftwood yeah. or, the, or the presence there therein. Yeah. So okay, then yeah. then the credits roll, and then there's a mid credit scene where they're under the mistletoe. Jake called that as well. Boom! And boom! Boom! 
And she's probably pregnant. She's probably pregnant, but they couldn't imply sex. So. And then, uh, and then they join the Avengers, and Gwen is immediately killed by Loki. The end. End of review. End of the movie. <laughs> that movie sucked. That movie did that was, suck. That was awful. But now, I will say this. The acting never made me angry. This was not see me dance. No. It wasn't. Honestly, this was, uh, this was like that one with that uh, that one guy that was in Stuck on You. Or Stuck on Me. The one with Matt Damon. You know the guy. The guy that broke his leg playing baseball. I don't remember his fucking name. Greg Kinnear. It was like that. The acting wasn't that bad, but you're like, fuck. Greg Kinnear. He was an actor. You done? Yeah, I'm sorry. This movie was, was uh, you ever seen You Got Mail? Yeah. This is Christian You Got Mail. Cause it's, it's, it is Christian You Got Mail. Only, thank God, Meg Ryan was not involved. <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> Because even with the, the blatant product placement in the title, the the use of the technology to get together, except it's Christian and bad. It's just a bad romantic comedy with, with Christianity in it. The internal logic of the movie is bullshit, though, because they continually pretend like she's not Christian, even though she adamantly says she is. If someone says they're Christian, they're Christian. It's sort of a... They just are. Yeah. Like It's like, hey, yeah. do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, you're Christian. This movie isn't very nice to Christians for being a Christian movie. I don't think Christian yeah. Mingle likes Christians. <laughs> just saying it's weird it's their only it's their only goddamn customer base this kind of shoehorn themselves into that a little pigeonhole action on yourself i can't wait for the sequel black people meet that's gonna be awesome oh man yeah. i'm looking forward to tinder the movie did you see which th- is just some asshole who's like a four sliding past sevens <laughs> like i only take ten or above there's nothing above ten did- there's nothing above ten we've looked did you see that that's all we got did you see that Christian Mingle has to allow same-sex couples on there now? They have to allow it? It was part of That's a... interesting. They were getting sued by someone, and uh, it wasn't a ruling. It wasn't like an... It doesn't set precedent oh. or anything. It was an, it was an out-of-court settlement that they agreed. I was say, that's... Yeah. That's an interesting precedent. Yeah. Oh, nice. So if you're gay and you're Christian, you can get your butthole stuffed on uh, Christian Mingle now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Or you could do the butthole stuffing. Yeah. They also they allow tops and bottoms. Or if you're so a, not just not just bottoms, that would be that's just lesbians. Yeah, if you're a lesbian, you can now uh, go get go get your rug eaten with maybe like a <laughs> if you want to trim your bush into a cross shape. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> we tried. We tr- We try real hard. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. tell us. Did, what- you, did you like it? Was it good? How for was you? this? Yeah, how was was this okay? I'm very <laughs> self conscious. Fit in the comments how uh, you how fuck started. I don't know. <clears throat> Date Christians or something and tell us how it went. I don't just tell us your dating stories about when you accidentally dated a Christian person or if you're Christian. Tell us how much this movie represents you. Uh, if you want, you can always recommend movies for us to do in the comments. We're definitely gonna be doing God's Not Dead too soon. That's got to be. A, is that yeah. out on DVD yet? I don't know, but we're doing it. We're doing it. <sighs> Obviously, the, the the God's Not Dead's the first movie review we ever did. Also, Ray Comfort's movie is coming out, and uh, Ray Comfort may have sent us advanced copies. I'm not sure. Can't confirm, but it's looking like he did. It's I, I, Legitimately, I don't know what it is. Hemet Meta, who does a blog and a YouTube channel, you probably are aware of him. Uh, he actually got in contact with us because he we, he knows Ray, and they have each other's contact information, and Ray specifically asked Hemet to get our information so we could send us something. So I'm curious what it is. If we're dead of anthrax, <laughs> it's, it was Ray. I was going to say, it's probably anthrax. Yeah, yeah. just saying. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the, the ending things we got to say. Twitter, at Bible Reloaded, at Hugo Reloaded. Subscribe to subscribe. the channel. There's Patreon that exists, and then you can just, you can fuck off now. Is that it? Oh, yep. uh, Quran Reloaded. We do Quran Reloaded. We do that too. We do uh, unpopular culture, which is like other That's thing. It's a weekly sort of podcast format YouTube channel where we talk about movies and TV and video games. Indeedly, do and probably dicks sometimes. I yeah. I can't tell if this this episode took a lot of effort or no effort, but I feel like I feel like no one no one likes it. They're all gone. It's gonna be a it's a pay, it's a weird payoff situation we got going on. So until next time, I'm uh, Hugo. I promise this take this this takes a lot of work to make. Does it feel like it? And I'm Jake, and uh, he's editing. I don't. It's gonna. I don't have to deal with any of this ever again. This is gonna suck. This is gonna take like eight, like hours. I'm not even gonna watch it. I'm not either. I'm gonna do it and put it up, <laughs> and people are gonna watch it. And that's the end.
Bye.